On this edition of Academy Connections, we will investigate the economic crisis, the effects of energy drinks, red-shirted kindergartners, and the curse in Sako. This is Academy Connections. On the campus of Thornton Academy, CATV brings you. Hey, can we get a mic check? Five, four, three, go, talent. Academy Connection, connecting TA to the world. Are we or aren't we in a recession? This question fills the minds of many American citizens, politicians, and economists. There are several underlining issues that are occurring including record high gas prices, the decline of the U.S. dollar, and the burst of the housing bubble. I report from the State House in Augusta, underscoring the importance of this issue on the minds of many and the connection to our economic well-being to the current budget debates in the Maine legislature. Who would have thought that birthdays could cause possible ramifications on your education? If you have a birthday lying within the fall months, you may have been through this dilemma. Should parents let their children go to kindergarten when they are younger than the other students or hold them back a year? Correspondent Kevin Foley has our report. What do studies say about this issue? Studies on the effects of age at kindergarten entry yield mixed results. Studies have found no significant difference between the samples in reading test scores as a result of chronological age. Here are a couple of tips for parents. Become familiar with the regulations regarding kindergarten entry age in your district and state and engage in dialogue about kindergarten entry age with other professionals and with parents of kindergartners. Turkey, located on Iraq's northern border, is posed to crack down on Kurdish guerrillas in northern Iraq. The nearly 3,000 guerrilla forces are from the outlawed Kurdistan Workers Party, which is commonly abbreviated as the PKK. The U.S. has designated the PKK as a terrorist organization. Turkey has threatened a major military incursion into northern Iraq against the Kurdish guerrilla forces unless the U.S. takes action. While the nation continues to hold primaries and caucuses to determine the Democratic and Republican nominees, it seemed only fair to let TA students in on the action. Carpe Diem, in association with the newly formed Quill and Scroll Honor Society, sponsored TA's first ever presidential primary. The event was known as the Super Friday Primary, with the slogan, most of the country, including Maine, has voted for a presidential candidate. Now it's your turn. Over 180 ballots were cast during all four lunch waves, and the results are as follows. The winner of the Democratic primary is Senator Barack Obama, with 76% of the vote to Senator Hillary Clinton's 21%. The winner of the Republican primary is Senator John McCain, with 67% to Governor Mike Huckabee's 14%, with 19% uncommitted. Thank you to all who voted. The terms Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Kwanzaa are hard to find. Instead, a lot of businesses choose to use the terms Happy Holidays. The goal is not to offend anyone of different religious or cultural backgrounds. The best way to describe this is a common phrase used in this country, political correctness. From uncapitalizing God and the Pledge of Allegiance to Don Imus getting fired, political correctness has run rampant. Stores such as Staples, Shaw's, and L.L. Bean use the terminology of Happy Holidays, while Target and Best Buy use Merry Christmas. Walmart had changed its policy back to Merry Christmas after over a year of Christian boycott of the Superstore chain. Do you think Happy Holidays should be used or Merry Christmas? Here at Thornton Academy, students, faculty, and staff are allowed to celebrate and display any religious or cultural holiday of their choosing. This is due in part to the fact that there is no set policy, according to Mr. Menard, on this issue. Sacco installed its first windmill at its waste treatment plant in an attempt to create cost-effective and clean energy to power the new Amtrak station. The city of Sacco approved and built a second windmill on Sacco Island. The question is whether the new windmill is viewed more as an eyesore or a great source of energy. It is typical for areas in Maine to have a little flooding in the spring due to the melting snow. But for the people in northern Maine, especially in Fort Kent, this past April was no typical spring. The flooding was the worst in nearly 30 years, and some scientists called it a 100-year event. What is the government response? Could it happen in Saco? Von Pila has a report. Recently, FEMA has been dispatched to help in the cleanup process. FEMA officials have been urging people affected by the flood to contact the Emergency Management Center with information. 
In addition to the cleanup, life is returning to northern Maine towns, and we wish them all the best in the cleanup. And I'm Justin Schnett. Join us next time when we continue to connect TA to the world.